Section 1 Introduction In this introduction, we're talking about large language models, LLMs, which are becoming increasingly powerful and useful tools in artificial intelligence, I. These models have displayed exceptional performance in complex tasks that require expertise in various fields such as programming and creative writing. Their ability to interact with people through chat interfaces has accelerated their adoption by the public. What's striking about LLMs is their seemingly simple training methodology. Initially, autoregressive transformers are pre-trained on a substantial body of self-supervised data. Then, they are fine-tuned to align with human preferences using methods like reinforcement learning with human feedback, RLHF. But this simplicity masks the high computational demands of this process, which has so far restricted the development of LLMs to only a few entities. Several pre-trained LLMs, like Bloom, Llama 1, and Falcon, have been released publicly and perform comparably to proprietary models like GPT-3 and Chinchilla. However, these models don't quite measure up to proprietary product LLMs like ChatGPT, BARD, and Claude. These product LLMs are intensively fine-tuned to align with human preferences, which significantly boosts their usefulness and safety. But fine-tuning involves high computational and human annotation costs and lacks transparency and reproducibility, creating hurdles for community-wide progress in AI alignment research. In response to these issues, we have developed and released Llama 2 and Llama 2 Chat, which are part of a family of pre-trained and fine-tuned LLMs, with up to 70 billion parameters. In our tests for usefulness and safety, these models generally outperformed existing open-source models and matched up well against some proprietary models. We have taken steps to improve their safety, including using safety-specific data annotation and tuning, red teaming, and iterative evaluations. We're also providing a detailed account of our fine-tuning methodology and approach to enhancing LLM safety. Our goal is to encourage others in the community to replicate fine-tuned LLMs and to further enhance the safety of these models. We hope that this will lay the foundation for more responsible development of LLMs in the future. In the course of developing Llama 2 and Llama 2 Chat, we made some interesting discoveries about tool usage and the organization of knowledge over time, which we'll also share. We're releasing Llama 2, an improved version of Llama 1, and Llama 2 Chat, a dialogue-optimized version of Llama 2. These models are available for both research and commercial purposes. The size of the training data for Llama 2 has been increased by 40%, and we've doubled the context length of the model. We're also releasing different versions of Llama 2 with 7B, 13B, and 70B parameters. However, we won't be releasing the 34B parameter model right away due to time constraints for adequate red teaming. While we acknowledge that LLMs like Llama 2 can present potential risks, we believe that a safe and open release of such models will be beneficial for society overall. Please note that the models have been primarily tested in English and not in all conceivable situations. Therefore, we recommend developers to conduct application-specific safety testing and tuning before deploying any applications of Llama 2 chat. We have provided a responsible use. Guide and code examples to facilitate the safe use of these models. The following sections of this paper will discuss our pre-training and fine-tuning methodologies, our approach to model safety, observations and insights from our work, related research, and our conclusions. Section Summary Large language models, LLMs, have become popular AI assistants due to their ability to excel in complex reasoning tasks across various domains. However, the development of LLMs has been limited by high computational requirements and the need for fine-tuning to align with human preferences. In this work, we introduce Llama 2, a family of pre-trained and fine-tuned LLMs that perform well on safety benchmarks and are on par with closed-source models. We also emphasize the importance of safety testing and provide guidelines for responsible deployment of Llama 2 and Llama 2 chat. Section 2 Pre-training To construct the latest version of the Llama 2 model family, we built on the pre-training method outlined in a previous research, starting with a well-tuned auto-regressive transformer. However, we introduced several modifications to enhance its performance. These alterations involved executing a more thorough data cleansing, revising our data combinations, expanding the training on total tokens by 40%, doubling the context length, and incorporating a mechanism known as grouped query attention, GQA. This latter tool helped us scale up the inference process for larger models. A comparison of the attributes of Llama 1 and Llama 2 models is detailed in the table. In terms of pre-training data, our training set includes a fresh compilation of information from public sources, and importantly, it doesn't involve any data derived from Meta's products or services. We deliberately excluded data from certain websites recognized for hosting an extensive amount of personal details about private citizens. 
We utilize 2 trillion tokens of data for training, providing a balance between performance and cost. We emphasize the more factual sources in our training set to enhance the model's knowledge base and to minimize the potential for generating false or misleading information. We also carried out several pre-training data investigations to clarify our model's potential abilities and restrictions. The outcomes of these investigations can be found in the specified section of the paper. Turning to the specifics of our training process, we mostly retained the pre-training setup and model architecture from LAMA-1. We continued to utilize the standard transformer architecture, and we applied pre-normalization using a technique called RMS norm. We used an activation function called SWIGLU and implemented rotary positional embeddings, ROPE. The key architectural differences in comparison to the LAMA-1 model are the extended context length and the use of GQA. A detailed examination of these modifications, alongside experiments to show their significance, can be found in the appendix. Regarding hyperparameters, we trained the model using the Atom W optimizer, with its two parameters, commonly referred to as beta 1 and beta 2, set at 0.9 and 0.95 respectively, and another parameter, epsilon, set at 0.00001. We also used a cosine learning rate schedule, warming up over 2,000 steps, and we gradually reduced the final learning rate to a tenth of the peak learning rate. Furthermore, we applied a weight decay of 0.1 and a gradient clipping of 1.0. A graph illustrating the training loss for LAMA-2 using these hyperparameters is presented in Figure A. Section Summary The new LAMA-2 models were created by building upon the pre-training approach used in LAMA-1, but with several improvements. These include more robust data cleaning, updated data mixes, training on more tokens, doubling the context length, and using grouped query attention for better. Inference Scalability The training details involve adopting most of the pre-training settings and model architecture from LAMA-1 with some architectural differences such as increased context length and grouped query attention. Section, Tokenizer. Our tokenizing system mirrors that used in the LAMA-1 project, utilizing a BITEPIR encoding, BPE, method with the sentence piece toolkit. Just like in LAMA-1, all numerical values are broken down into their individual digits, and bytes are used to disassemble unfamiliar UTF-8 characters. The resulting vocabulary totals 32,000 unique tokens. When it comes to the hardware and environmental impact of our training, let's dive into that. We conducted our preliminary model training on two separate clusters, Meta's Research Supercluster, RSC, and our internal production clusters. Both of these are powered by NVIDIA A100s. There are a couple of primary differences between these two clusters. The first is the interconnect technology they use. The RSC uses NVIDIA Quantum InfiniBand whereas our production cluster uses a ROS, RDMA over converged Ethernet, solution, powered by standard Ethernet switches. Both these interconnection technologies can handle a throughput of 200 gigabits per second. The second difference lies in the power consumption per GPU. The RSC's cap is 400W, while our production clusters is 350W. These two setups allowed us to evaluate the effectiveness of these different types of interconnect for large-scale training. It turns out that ROS, a more affordable commercial interconnect network, scales nearly as well as the more expensive InfiniBand for up to 2,000 GPUs. This makes large-scale training more accessible. When using A100s with ROS and a 350W power cap, our refined codebase achieved up to 90% of the performance of the RSC, which uses the InfiniBand interconnect and a 400W power cap. Moving on to the environmental impact of our training process, we calculated the carbon emissions from the pre-training of our LAMA-2 models. This was done by considering power consumption estimates for GPU devices and their carbon efficiency. The actual power usage of a GPU can vary depending on its usage, and it's likely different from the thermal design power, TDP, which we used as a rough estimate for GPU power. Please note, our calculations do not include power requirements from other sources, such as interconnects, non-GPU server power consumption, and data center cooling systems. We also didn't factor in the carbon emissions associated with the production of AI hardware like GPUs, which can contribute to the overall carbon footprint. Our computations show that the pre-training of the LAMA-2 model family resulted in a certain amount of carbon emissions. The training process involved a total of 3.3 million GPU hours using a 100-80 GB hardware, either with a TDP of 400W or 350W. We estimate that the overall emissions from this training were about 539 metric tons of CO2 equivalent. However, all of these emissions were offset through Meta's sustainability program. Additionally, by publicly sharing our models, we can help to reduce future costs and resource usage for other companies, contributing further to global resource savings. Section Summary 
The tokenizer used in Llama 2 is the same as Llama 1, employing a byte pair encoding algorithm with a vocabulary size of 32k tokens. The models were pre-trained on Meta's research supercluster and internal production clusters, using NVIDIA A100s with different interconnect types and power consumption caps. The carbon emissions resulting from the pre-training of LAMA-2 models were estimated to be 539 TCO2 EQ, which were fully offset by Meta's sustainability program. Section 2.3 LAMA-2 Pre-trained Model Evaluation In this section, we'll talk about the performance of various pre-trained models, including the LAMA-1 and LAMA-2 base models, the Mosaic ML Pre-trained Transformer, MPT, models, and the Falcon models, as evaluated using our internal library. To keep things fair, we've used the higher score from our internal evaluation or any reported public results when discussing the MPT and Falcon models. Let's break down the performance across several standard academic benchmarks. The specifics for all the benchmarks are discussed in a different section, but here we'll focus on a general overview. The benchmarks can be divided into a few main categories. 1. Code asterisk. We calculated the average score on human eval and MBPP benchmarks. 2. Common sense reasoning asterisk. The average was calculated from benchmarks like PIQA, SIQA, Hella Swag, Wino Grande, Arc Easy and Challenge, Open Book QA, and Common Sense QA. We took 7 shot results from Common Sense QA and 0 shot results from all others. 3. World Knowledge Asterisk. The 5 shot performance was evaluated on natural questions and trivia QA. 4. Reading Comprehension Asterisk. For this, we averaged the 0 shot results from Squad, Quack, and Bool Q benchmarks. 5. Math asterisk. We reported the average of the GSM 8K, 8-shot, and Math, 4-shot, benchmarks. 6. Popular aggregated benchmarks asterisk. Here, we included the MMLU, 5-shot, Big Bench Hard, BBH, 3-shot, and AGI Eval, 3-5-shot, results. For AGI Eval, only English tasks were considered. Looking at the results, it's evident that the LAMA 2 models perform better than the LAMA 1 models. For example, the LAMA 270B model improved results on the MMLU and BBH benchmarks by roughly 5 and 8 points, respectively, in comparison to the LAMA 165B model. In most categories except code benchmarks, the LAMA 27B and 30B models were superior to the corresponding MPT models. Similarly, LAMA 27B and 34B outshone Falcon 7B and 40B in all benchmark categories. Additionally, the LAMA 270B model surpassed all open source models in performance. We didn't limit our comparison to open source models. When comparing the LAMA 270B results to closed source models, we found that it closely matched GPT 3.5's performance on the MMLU and GSM 8K benchmarks. However, there was a notable performance gap in the code benchmarks. Across nearly all benchmarks, the LAMA 270B model performed just as well or better than the POM 540B model. That said, the LAMA 270B model still trails behind GPT-4 and POM-2L in terms of performance. We've also taken into account potential data contamination, with further details on this shared in a separate section. Section Summary In this section, the authors evaluate the performance of the LAMA-1 and LAMA-2 base models, as well as other pre-trained models, on various academic benchmarks. They report the results for different categories of benchmarks, including code, common sense reasoning, world knowledge, reading comprehension, math, and popular aggregated benchmarks. The LAMA-2 models generally outperform the LAMA-1 models and show competitive performance compared to other open-source and closed-source models, although there is still room for improvement. The authors also discuss potential data contamination, which is further explained in another section. Section 3 Fine-Tuning Chapter 3 Fine-Tuning Our Latest Project, LAMA-2 Chat, is the culmination of several months of painstaking research and the application of various alignment techniques. We've been hard at work, using both instruction tuning and RLHF, reinforcement learning from human feedback, an approach that requires a substantial investment in terms of computational and annotation resources. In this chapter, we're going to share our experiences and discoveries from our experiments, including those involving supervised fine-tuning, initial and iterative reward modeling, as well as RLHF. We've also developed a new technique we're calling Ghost Attention, GAT. Our research indicates that this method assists in managing the flow of dialogue over multiple turns. For those interested in safety evaluations of our fine-tuned models, head over to the section devoted to that topic. Now, let's get down to business. How did we start? 
we kicked things off at the supervised fine tuning SFT stage by using publicly available instruction tuning data, just like the approach used in previous research. The phrase, quality is all you need, rings especially true. In our work, there's a myriad of third party SFT data sources available, but not all are created equal. Many, we found, lack the diversity and quality necessary, especially when it came to aligning large language models, LLMs, with dialogue style instructions. So, we decided to focus our energies on gathering thousands of high quality examples of SFT data, some of which are showcased in Table X. We set millions of examples from third party datasets aside and concentrated on using fewer, but higher quality examples sourced from our own vendor based annotation efforts. This strategic shift led to a noticeable improvement in our results. This aligns with the findings of similar research, which suggests that a limited set of clean instruction tuning data can be enough to achieve excellent quality. We discovered that tens of thousands of SFT annotations were sufficient to reach our desired high quality outcome. We concluded our SFT annotation efforts after accumulating a total of 27,540 annotations. Importantly, none of these annotations came from meta user data. We also noted that different annotation platforms and vendors can yield significantly different model performances, underscoring the crucial need for data checks even when sourcing annotations from vendors. To ensure the quality of our data, we meticulously scrutinized a set of 180 examples. We compared the human provided annotations with the samples generated by our model. To our surprise, we often found that the model's outputs were comparable to those handwritten by human annotators. This discovery led us to believe that we could reallocate more annotation effort towards preference-based annotation for RLHF. Dot. Section Summary The section discusses the process of fine-tuning the LAMA-2 chat model through alignment techniques such as instruction tuning and reinforcement learning from human feedback, RLHF. The authors also introduce a new technique called ghost attention, GAT, to control dialogue flow. They emphasize the importance of collecting high-quality fine-tuning data and highlight the impact of different annotation platforms and vendors on model performance. Section. Fine-tuning details. Let's discuss the fine-tuning procedure. We chose to fine-tune the model in a supervised manner, employing a learning method that mimics the cycle of a cosine curve, starting with an initial learning rate of 0.00002. To keep the model from overfitting, we applied a weight decay of 0.1. The training was carried out in batches, each containing 64 instances and a sequence length of 4096 tokens. For each instance in a batch, we paired a prompt with its corresponding response. To make sure we fully utilize the model's sequence length, we combined all the prompts and responses from the training set, using a special token to distinguish between them. For the optimization goal, we used an autoregressive method, essentially ignoring any losses related to the user prompts. This way, the model only learned from the responses, which is where we concentrated our backward error propagation. The whole process was repeated for two full passes or epics. Next, we enhanced the fine-tuned model with a technique called reinforcement learning with human feedback, RLHF. This process helps the model to better adhere to human instructions and preferences. Here, we collected data representing human preferences by having human annotators choose their preferred model responses from two given options. This valuable feedback was then used to train a reward model, which was able to learn from the patterns in these preferences and, in turn, could automate the process of preference decision making. Finally, we addressed an important aspect of the model, maintaining consistency across multiple dialogue turns. In a conversation, certain instructions must apply to all turns, for example, being concise or impersonating a specific public figure. When we instructed our model, Llama2 Chat, to follow such guidelines, the model's responses should have consistently adhered to these instructions. However, we found that our initial RLHF models tended to disregard these instructions after a few dialogue exchanges. To counter this, we devised Ghost Attention, GAT, a straightforward strategy influenced by context distillation. This technique tweaks the fine-tuning data to improve the model's focus across multiple stages, thus enhancing the control over dialogue across multiple turns. Section Summary For fine-tuning, we use a cosine learning rate schedule, an initial learning rate of 2E5, weight decay of 0.1, batch size of 64, and sequence length of 4096 tokens. Each sample consists of a prompt and an answer, and we concatenate all prompts and answers from the training set. We utilize an autoregressive objective, zero out the loss on user prompt tokens, and backpropagate only on answer tokens. We fine-tune the model for two epochs. Additionally, we apply reinforcement learning with human feedback, RLHF, to align the model behavior with human preferences. 
We collect data where human annotators select their preferred model output and use it to train a reward model. We also introduce ghost attention, GAT, a method inspired by context distillation, to improve dialogue control over multiple turns.